Good morning, folks, and thanks for attending this press conference this morning. Uh, I'm here today to talk to you about uh, some unsolved bank robberies that have occurred since uh, January of 2014. Uh, the Toronto Police Hold Squad has uh, had an increase of bank robberies uh, in the first three months of this year, a 75% increase over last year to date. And uh, 12 of the unsolved robberies, uh, 10 of the 12 unsolved robberies are, re are these four people here that I'm about to show you today that are responsible for them. Uh, the first robbery occurred that I'm going to talk about is the Pleather Bandit, who's on the screen right now. We've uh, nicknamed him that because we believe uh, that the jacket may be, in fact, an imitation. Uh, he's a male, brown or black, 40 to 50 years of age, that attended the Bank of Montreal at uh, King and Dufferin on the 11th of March 2014 at 4 in the afternoon. Uh, he made a verbal demand um, and he passed over a note indicating that he was armed with a handgun placing his hand uh, inside his jacket. At one point in time, he uh, moved uh, what appeared to be prescription glasses down onto his face, then lifted them again. Um, he had uh, believed to be an accent of some sort, and then he fled uh, with a quantity of cash, and uh, there was no injuries. He's only responsible for one robbery th this year. The next individual I wish to speak to you about is uh, called the Man in Black. It, uh, happened on the 15th of January 2014. A male person, dark black sunglasses, dressed in black, entered the uh, bank at 110 Spadina, Spadina in Adelaide. Uh, at that point in time, he approached the teller, presenting a note indicating that he was armed with a handgun. Um, he received a quantity of cash and fled. There was no injuries. Uh, the pictures are excellent in, in both these, in, uh, both these uh, cases. The third in, uh, individual, uh, is what we call the box cutter bandit. This, this male person is a male white, 35 to 40 years of age, five foot nine to six feet, uh, wearing a dark winter coat, uh, a scarf around his face, along with a toque. He's attended three different banks on Wednesdays on, uh, in March on Bloor Street West. In each case, he approaches a teller. He produces a knife that's been described uh, by some of the tellers as appeared to be like a box cutter and he's made a demand for cash. There's some very good photos of him with his scarf down as he's going through the door. Again, we're hoping that somebody can identify this individual. The last individual that I wish to speak about is, uh, is what we call the mummy bandit. His spree of robberies started back in October 2013 uh, in the fashion district uh, or of uh, Toronto. Uh, in each case that uh, he he attends the banks uh, and he's wearing some sort of disguise. He started off with uh, wearing a, a scarf tightly wrapped around his face so you couldn't even tell other than his eyes. And then uh, in one case, uh, we actually nicknamed him the Joker. He had makeup on his, uh, uh, all over his face and on his arms and wearing latex gloves. This individual has robbed approximately seven banks since October. On each uh, bank robbery, he's produced either a knife or a handgun and has received a quantity of cash. The description of this individual is a male 20 to 30 years of age, and we have either tan, olive, Asian complexion because of his uh, disguises that he's wearing. Um, anywhere between five foot six to five foot 10, he walks with a certain gait. We were able to track him after the one robbery on, uh, at Harbor Square through Union Station, where you see video surveillance of the individual after, who we believe to be the individual, after he's removed the scarf and the disguise. Um, you can see a, a distant photo of him. We're hoping somebody can recognize him. There, there is video of his certain walk that he, that he has, and also it looks like he appears to have at least two rings on his left hand. This individual we have great concern about because he is uh, using uh, an edge weapon and he's used uh, what we believe to be a handgun uh, on at least uh, on every occasion. The last robbery that individual committed was uh, the 27th of March 2014 at Carleton and Young. So with the public's assistance and Crime Stoppers assistance and with the media's assistance we're hoping that somebody can identify any one of these individuals so we can do our work and uh, apprehend these individuals and get them off the streets. Here with me today is uh, Bill Crate from the Canadian Bankers Association who would just uh, like to speak to in behalf of the Crime Stoppers uh, Connection and the Enhancement 
for the uh, Crime Stoppers rewards. Thank you. Thank you, Staff Inspector Mike Girl from the uh, Toronto Police Holdup Squad. The Canadian Bankers Association represents 59 banks in Canada, employing approximately 275,000 people. Robbery, as you've heard, is a predatory and personal crime. And, that's, and it's the desperation and the unpredictability of this crime is what makes it so dangerous to, to the employees uh, of our institutions and our customers. The banking industry commends the Toronto Police Service along with Crime Stoppers for the good work they are doing. It's these efforts that, that have, I believe, prevented a lot of crime and a lot of suffering. Again, it's this good work that's reduced the number of uh, robberies that have occurred in Canada from over the last 13 years, from close to 1,100 to 525 in 2013. To assist in identifying these individuals who are wanted by police, the Canadian Bankers Association will top up Crime Stoppers for all payouts for information leading to an arrest by 50%. It's efforts such as this media event and the high clearance rate that we see uh, uh, not just in Toronto but across Canada, I think that's influencing the overall behavior of bank robbers. If I have one message for bank robbers and potential bank robbers, it is if you rob a bank, you will get caught. We will not give up in trying to make you accountable. We won't give up ever. Thank you. So what does that end up amounting to then? If somebody calls an attempt to Crime Stoppers and leads to an arrest, what will they get? So Crime Stoppers has a, um, has a range of monies that they offer depending on the information and, uh, and how useful that is uh, in the arrest. So that would be a Crime Stoppers decision, not a, uh, not, not, not a, CBA, position, or not a CBA decision or I believe a police decision. It's strictly so Crime Stoppers. So if Crime Stoppers is given a thousand, you'll add in another five hundred. Correct. Okay. Yeah. And can you, you said that bank robbers are down over the last thirteen years. Is there anything to account, uh, either William or Mike, for the seventy-five percent spike you've seen in the last few months? Well, right now I, I would say that uh, we're having some serial bank some serial bank robbers right now. We have uh, had a, a few serials uh, in the first three months. And if we can't get, uh, believe it or not, we can't get the photos out to the public uh, very quickly. They're great photos, but if we can get them out quickly, we can stop the serial bank robber. And a lot of it depends on uh, how quickly we can get it out and how much media coverage it gets. And then we do, we do result uh, in a lot of arrests from Crime Stoppers or tips from the media after the people see it on TV or see it in the newspaper. Do you think this is an anomaly, just the fact that there are so many serials right now? I, I believe so. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm hoping that... Uh, that uh, it'll slow down again, but it was a very busy first three months uh, for the holdup squad in the, in, with bank robberies and, and the banking community. Uh, so uh, we don't want to, uh, to alarm anybody, but we, we'd really like to get these guys apprehended. We touch wood, we haven't had a bank robbery in April yet this month, and we're halfway through. So, but we had a, a real spike in January through March. Is that typical? Like, I mean, with summertime being shooting season in Toronto, would wintertime be bank robbery season in Toronto? No, I, I don't think it's bank robbery season, but uh, in the winter time when it's cold, there is, uh, you know, scarves and, and balaclavas that these individuals feel comfortable walking around the streets with, where it's not so comfortable when it gets warm out, if it ever does. So if this bad weather is actually good business for them, perhaps? Well, it, they become a little more uh, blending in with the community when they're walking around with scarves. Do you believe that these men were working together? Not at all. There's no indication, and, and nor do I have any reason to believe they're working together. It just seems to be that uh, there's a, a series of unsolved robberies with great photos that can be solved, and uh, we can increase our clearance rate and, and also put the bank tellers and the bank community at ease. How much money are we talking about that's being stolen? I never discuss the money because it's not really the money that we're, we're after. It's, it is a, a violent crime, a victim crime. So uh, I never really discuss the money. The money's not really that important at the end of the day. It's uh, somebody going in there putting a gun or a knife uh, or threatening a teller. That's the important thing. We want to stop these individuals. Is there anything in particular about any of these banks? The one at Spadina and Adelaide you referred to, I, is that the Scotia Bank? We've done stories about that location in particular before. Well, the, the, yeah, some of these banks have uh, no doubt been uh, victimized before and over the years. They are in the downtown where there is a, a large uh, large amount of banks and 
the downtown fashion and downtown uh, financial district, so uh, and it's close to the subway, close to transit. So all these banks are in the downtown core, all of these robberies happen in the downtown core? Uh, most of them did, except for the uh, the, the box cutter band is out in the Bluer West. Uh, I believe Bluer West Village is uh, two of the banks, and one a little further out, closer to Royal York, um, where the individual was on the subway line. That individual that had the box cutter, uh, who's wearing the scarf, he's he's definitely on the Bluer subway line. Can you tell this, this, they account for four of the ten unsolved robberies since the beginning of the this year. Is that right? No, these four individuals account for ten of the. These four individuals uh, are responsible for 10 of the 12 unsolved robberies this year so far. So right now we've, uh, we've cleared up the rest of the robberies, the uh, 23. We have 12 unsolved, and uh, these individuals are, are responsible for 10 of those. Do you by chance have a list that you could run through? Of maybe this is something we could get after where they, like addresses, dates. You touched I, on I, can, I can provide information. you some of those, that information after the press conference. Okay. Is there any pattern in terms of the times of day they're striking these banks, or? Uh, no, really. The uh, the individual, uh, the box cutter, was only heading on Wednesdays. He robbed three banks on a Wednesday. Uh, the uh, the mummy bandit, uh, he's very sporadic. He's been going uh, robbing banks since October, as far back as we can track, and maybe even further. Uh, the ones that we've identified that we definitely believe is him. There's seven of them since October. They're roughly about five weeks apart. Uh, there's no real pattern as to what day of the week or where, but uh, it's definitely in that, that area. There is, uh, at one point in time, the, the Joker, when he was disguised as the, we call the Joker with the makeup, we believe that he uh, was taken uh, by taxi to the area of Trinity Bellwoods, which is kind of in the middle of all the banks, somewhere in that area. Two, two robbed banks. Or after, the, after the bank after robbery, he... Yeah, he fled in a taxi cab, and he was. Uh, we believe that he uh, ended up somewhere in the area of Trinity Bellwoods Park. Not can, you, yeah. can you speak from experience, Mike, as to because if there's people that are sort of seeing some descriptions that they recognize, but maybe thinking that guy would never be involved in that, just speak from experience in terms of the kinds of people you've seen, you know, being unveiled as different bandits. Well. well it depends on their life at the time. I mean, I've arrested, been involved in investigating bank robberies for a number of years. Pretty well, all the, the 90s, I was investigating robberies and I investigated and arrested people with university degrees, with students with no records because they come in hardship, to drug addicts, to the worst possible drug addict, to the worst possible repeat offender. These individuals that we're seeing here could be well known to law enforcement in other jurisdictions or they could be somebody's neighbor. If somebody recognizes this individual, any one of these individuals by their, by their walk or their look or what they're wearing, it, contact Crime Stoppers. Let us, uh, let us put the name to the face and, and the name to the photos and do our investigation because it, it could be your neighbor, it could be your relative, or, or it could be the, the worst possible offender from a parole officer that may recognize this individual or a probation officer. When you talked about that the one guy had a different type of walk, can you describe it a bit? Or are, like, are you saying he walks with a limp? Or? Well, it looks like a limp, but I think it's more of his gait. Uh, when you see him in the Union sta Station video, the mummy bandit, he kind of has a, a kind of a wide, weird walk, um, almost hunched over a little bit. And uh, it, it's hard to explain, but there's something different about it. It's just not a normal walk. <clears throat> In terms of how many bank robberies are generally solved, can you speak to what the record is? Well, in the last, uh, since and I have records back, going back a number of years, but the ones that I keep most recent to myself is up back to about 2009, and we're sitting at somewhere in the area of 85 to 92 to 93% uh, clearance rate on these robberies, depending on what year it is. And keeping in mind that with these press conferences, as Mr. Great said, they don't go away. The last press conference that I did back in December, the Dirty Dozen, um, when we put pictures out, we solved robberies from 2010 by releasing photos again and again that have been released numerous times and we're able to get that one person that we need to identify that photo that at the right day, right time, and uh, we're still solving robberies from back in 2009. And with uh, you know better DNA, better forensics, 
uh, we're, we're still getting lots of hits uh, right back to the, the early 2000s now with uh, fingerprints and, and DNA hits. So they're not going to go away. There's no statute of limitation. If, uh, if we can solve a crime going back years, we're going to solve it. When you talked about the one guy who just goes on the Wednesdays, it looks like, I mean, is that normal? Like, are there sometimes, do you see patterns with these guys? Uh, yeah, yeah if, there is. And for whatever reason, some of them, it, it may be a certain place they have to go on that certain day, and on the way back, they're, they're robbing a bank, or, or maybe it's... Uh, you know, just like the lucky baseball player. Uh, I got lucky on a Wednesday, and I'm not going to change my habit. So uh, everybody's got their own story, and uh, when we catch them, we'll ask them what their story is. And because of that, we get lots of uh, interesting stories from these individuals when we actually do apprehend them as to why they've done it and uh, what's it all about. And that's why I've told you before, <laughs> university students to educated people to drug addicts to the worst criminal. Anybody can fall and make a... Uh, you know, depending on, on what's happening in their life on that particular day, they can go down the wrong road. Is there a, like a difference at all between the, the bandits who do one-offs as opposed to those who you know, commit their seven robberies? And well, some of them go on a spree because of a drug addiction, uh, but the one-offs may be just down and out for a month. Maybe they need to, uh, it could very well could be rent, could be food, or they could be traveling through this jurisdiction going to another jurisdiction and moving off and doing something else. Uh, a lot of these people that we find that have been through the criminal courts before just don't have robbery convictions. They have fraud convictions and theft convictions and break and enter convictions. It's just not uh, uh, dabbling in one crime. So uh, they could be involved in some other crime that we just haven't uh, made the link to yet. Do you know uh, by any chance how much it's costing the house and the CBA has stepped up and added to the reward when we talk about crime solving? Well, every time Bill's been here with me, touch wood. <laughs> Uh, we've been we've been getting some results and good results where where some of the robberies have been solved. Um, you know, when we did the uh, dirty dozen, uh, I think there was two or three that were were solved in that that one press conference in a matter of days with the phone calls coming in. And uh, and I'm hopeful if this gets the, the proper media attention uh, on the web through social media, out there in the papers and on the news, that that I'm very hopeful again that somebody's going to recognize these individuals and they're going to make the call. Has anybody ever said to you, yeah, I came forward because of your reward? Crime Stoppers, yes. yes. Absolutely. Yes, we've had, we've had calls at the, at the whole of squad from individuals that have seen it on the, on the news or in the paper and made the calls there. Uh, we've had individuals write information right from Crime Stoppers that that's why they're calling in. Um, it's absolutely, this is a, you know, you guys are the conduit between the public and the police here to get these pictures out of them. And anything you can do to help helps the community. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.